I'm Connor. I'm Eric. And, and this, this is, is a PIO, PIO vlog. vlog. Metro Fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Hold on, reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Multiple callers, a speaking complaint seen coming up the unit. Hustle party trapped, but there is an older lady that lives there. She is not seen. Right, medium size, two-story multi-family. We have a small complaint charge. Alpha side. I'll be assuming command. We're manning offensive strategy. We do have extensions to the second floor. Headed to the third. Let's go ahead and start a second alarm. 334, Cali 35, Land as well. Go long, 811, and 342, and 38, and 342. Medic 211, Medic 21, Battalion Chief 3, Battalion Chief 5, Safety 35. Hey everybody, welcome back to our vlog. We hope you all had a wonderful week and have a great weekend planned ahead. Eric and I want to get you guys caught up on some different incidents around the district. First, I'm going to start you off with a house fire that happened on South Norfolk Street in unincorporated Arapahoe County. Engine 42, odor investigation. Map page T33D 7408 South Norfolk Street Tower 35 Tower 45 Medic 31 Battalion Chief 4 Safety 18 Engine 22 Engine 41 Medic 23 Battalion Chief 5 Med 1 Rehab 12 Confirmed Residential Structure Fire Map page T33D 7408 South Norfolk Street. Initial reports for this house fire stated there was a heat lamp that had been knocked over and had started the bed on fire and had gone to the further area of the room and started that on fire as well. When firefighters arrived on scene, they did find a fire in the second story of the home. They immediately stretched a hose line inside and made fire attack from the inside of the house. With a second story fire, there's always a concern that the fire may have extended into to the attic space. So firefighters were able to use their thermal imager cameras and check into the attic space to make sure that there was no extension. And luckily the fire was just to the room and contents of that one room. The homeowners were able to evacuate safely, but there was a cat inside at the time. With that fire just being isolated to that one room, the cat was okay and our firefighters were able to go inside and to rescue that cat. A big safety message from this fire is to keep in mind that any sort of heating material, such as a heat lamp or a candle, those can uh, easily be knocked over and can start a fire very quickly. So just make sure that you're really careful around those and also watch your pets around them as well. I have two special operations incidents to talk about it during this vlog. The first incident was an entrapment that occurred at a U-Haul facility. Engine 15, Medic 15, Medical Assist, Map Page V24B at Uvalco 1750, East County Line Road. Rescue 34, Tower 18, Medic 13, Battalion Chief 1, Safety 18, Metcom Op 5, Public Assist, Map Page V24B at Uvalco 1750. East County Line Road. A forklift operator was transporting large cargo crates when the forklift accidentally tipped over and it trapped the driver underneath. The way that the driver was trapped underneath it required the entire 2,000 pound forklift to be lifted at the same time. So we had initial crews from station 15, station 18, and medic 13 on scene doing patient treatment and working on that lift operation until rescue 34 arrived and the technical rescue team members also assisted uh, with the last few minutes of getting that person out. They were transported to the hospital with very serious injuries. And a lot of the equipment they used is specialized lifting tools. And if you're curious to learn more about those, you can watch our Rescue 34 Fleet Friday to see some of the tools and equipment that they carry on that vehicle. Another call we had recently was a car that crashed into a Caribou Coffee location off of East Hampton Avenue in Cherry Hills Village. Engine 38, Medic 37, MVA with a known injury. Map page P24A at Caribou Coffee, 1400 East Hampton Avenue, Unit 150. Rescue 34, 
Tower 32, Medic 11, Battalion Chief 3, Safety 35, Metcom Ops 3, MVA Structure Involved, Map Page, P, 24, A, at, Caribou Coffee, 1400, East Hamden Avenue, Unit, 150. Initial reports stated that there was a car that had gone off the roadway and crashed into the side of the coffee shop. When firefighters got there, they did find that car had gone into the brick wall of a building and had crashed into a storage area of the coffee space and had caused a water leak inside. Firefighters extricated the driver out of the car. That person was in critical condition and they transported that person to the hospital. The Caribou Coffee is located where there's a fork in the road and it's right down in a curve of this piece of property. This is not the first time this location has been hit by a car before. And a lot of you ask, why does this always happen in South Metro's district, cars crashing into homes or buildings? This is the 30th time that this has happened this year and Eric and I, respond to these calls because there's a lot of media interest, community interest. It's not every day that you see a vehicle that has uh, gone into the side of a building. These incidents can happen for a variety of reasons. Anything from an impaired driver or someone who accidentally pushes the gas pedal and doesn't mean to but ends up inside of a location or it's something that involves reckless driving on the road and someone goes off the road and into a structure. For this specific call, Colorado State patrol remained on scene into the evening hours in order to investigate the crash and our technical rescue team they brought shoring supplies to stabilize the building tragically we had another fatal drowning occur at Chatfield State Park in our jurisdiction as well and we've had several different incidents out there this year that have all been a little bit different in the nature of how they've occurred in this particular case there was a high wind event that occurred and earlier in the afternoon two different boats found themselves in distress and people were in the water as well thankfully they were able to self-rescue make contact with park rangers and then ultimately be evaluated by paramedics for potential hypothermia none of them had to be taken to the hospital and about 20 minutes after that occurred there were two paddle boarders that were close to being in the middle of the reservoir that were taken off guard by the wind as well Dive 16, Dive 31, Engine 19, West Metro Tower 14, Medic 16, Medic 31, Medic 13, Battalion Chief 1, West Metro Battalion Chief 3, Safety 18, Metcom Ops 5, Dive Alert 3 Water Rescue, Map Page W18C, Chat Jameson Parking, Engine 13, Battalion Chief 2, Dive Alert 3 Water Rescue, Map page W18C 3932 feet 21 and 1055 feet 1. One of those individuals was thrown off of the paddleboard and was unable to get back on it, and they weren't wearing a po personal flotation device. Sadly, they went under the water and never came back up again. The second individual was able to hold on to the paddleboard and the wind and the waves carried them to the shoreline on the opposite side of the reservoir where park rangers were able to get a hold of them, take them to safety and get them evaluated by paramedics. Thankfully, that person didn't have to go to the hospital either. South Metro has two different water rescue units. One is at Station 16, very close to Chatfield Reservoir. The other is at Station 31, which is very close to Cherry Creek Reservoir. And that's where the bulk of our water rescue incidents occur, are at one of the two reservoirs there. When a water rescue occurs, the units from both stations will respond and work together to try and rescue the person who needs assistance, whether that's a surface rescue or a scuba rescue. In this case, no divers actually dove down into the water and park rangers located the victim later on that evening. We've had a few questions from you about the progress of Station 20 and we're excited to share a few photos with you of how the progress is coming along. Station 20 is still scheduled to open during the early part of next year in 2021. It will house a Type 1 engine and a Type 3 brush engine at that station. All right, everybody, now it is time for patch shout outs, and we have more than patches to shout out today. Thank you so much for all of you that have traded with us. The first one I have is from Putnam Township Fire Rescue. The second one I have is from Hillsboro Volunteer Fire Company, number three. 
The next patch I have is from Canada, and I want to see if I can try to pronounce this correctly. We have the MRC de la Metapedia Incendier Salvatage. I hope I said that correctly. Very cool patch. Thanks so much. The next two are from uh, from Australia. We got the Hutt Valley Bush Fire Force. There we go. And the second one is from Upper Hutt Rural Fire Force. Very cool, thanks so much. And this one is from Town of Tewkesbury Police. I love the name. That is probably my favorite name of all of these patches we received. Thank you. We got a really insanely amazing uh, trade this week. We have the um, local leather helmet front and they're personalized with Eric and I's last names on here. That is um, extremely kind and it says, congrats on 100,000 followers on the back. So thank you so much for that really kind, uh, kind thing in the mail. And then the last things I have are from Sandoval County Fire Department in New Mexico. We got some shirts. This one's a long sleeve. And then with it being October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we also got some breast cancer awareness t-shirts from this department as well. Maybe one more here. Awesome. Thank you so much for trading with us. We are so excited to add all of this to our collection. I have a few coins and patches to share with you. The first is from Augusta Fire Department Station 7. The second coin I have is from Lanesboro Fire Department. I also have a breast cancer awareness patch from Lanesboro Fire Department. Here's a patch from Calgary Fire Department. And this one's really cool with the mountains. It's almost kind of like South Metro's patch. It's the City of Calgary EMS paramedic patch. This is Cranford First Aid Squad. And then this is Westlake Fire Department from Ohio. I met two gentlemen from Indiana who came to Colorado to vacation and they were kind enough to stop by South Metro to trade with us. Um, so here's the Indianapolis Fire Department Challenge coin from the airport. Indianapolis International Airport Crash Fire Rescue Patch. That's one that I've never seen before and these ones are kind of rare. And then the Brown Township B-Shift Fire Department. And lastly, from Loco Leather, I have my custom helmet front with the congratulations for 100,000 YouTube channel views. So thank you so much for that. It's awesome that we're able to get all these great things from you and trade with you. We had a ton of patch requests, over 350 patch requests from South Metro, and we're so excited that you want to have our patch and our logo. Unfortunately, we ran out really quickly. So South Metro is in the process of making more, and until then, the patch request form that was on our website has been taken down. So we're working to get those back in stock, and as soon as they are, we will mail them out to you. But especially with COVID-19 slowing down some production, it might take a little while and longer than we'd like to, but we appreciate your patience. We continue to work towards a merchandise store where you'll be able to purchase patches and shirts, um, but that one is still a little ways out too. But we're in the process of doing it. We know that you're excited about it, and we are super excited about it too. So please hang on with us and we will get that to you as soon as we possibly can. As always, thank you so much for watching our videos. We love your comments and questions that you're leaving for us and please give us more suggestions about what you'd like to see and we will do our best to make those happen. Thanks and we hope you have a great week.